Hello and welcome Renko Trading Strategy. What is it about and let's build it with Python. So what is it actually about? You buy when an upward Renko break forms after a downward break or if it's the first break and no position is currently held. You sell when a downward Renko break forms after an upward break if a position is currently held. Let me give you an example. So, you have a predefined brick size, let's just say 10 US dollar. You have a previous close of 100 US dollar, then your upward brick is the price moves to 110 US dollar and your downward brick would be the price moves to 90 US dollar. If you check that for a EG a stock price, you see a couple of upward and downward bricks here. So these are just the green and red signals here. The one relevant are marked with buy and sell notation. So just as an example, you have a buy signal here. That is because you had a sell signal before. Now you have an upward brick, then you buy and you don't buy again here on another upward brick because you are already in a position. Same story here, same story here. And then at some point you're getting a downward brick and you're getting out of the position. So what you just need to conceptually do is to define a brick size and see when those up and downward bricks are forming and then you calculate a PL on it. So let's do that in Python. Let's go over the script together. Some important remarks here. I'm using some simplifying assumptions here to keep the code simple and straightforward, which is, I assume we can buy on the same day when the signal based on bricks is occurring. That's not realistic. And if you want to have a more realistic approach, you just take the next day's open instead. Secondly, I assume you can buy frictional shares for crypto. That wouldn't be a big deal, but for stocks it is. So keep that in mind. Dependent on the performance or the general interest on that topic, I will get rid of those simplifications and we are doing a more thorough backtest, a more realistic one, adding some stuff like transaction costs. For now, let's keep it as simple as possible so you get an idea of the general logic here. First of all, library imports. So we need pandas for data handling and why finance to pull stock prices from the internet. And that is what I'm doing here. So I'm just pulling a random stock in this case, Apple, and I'm starting at a random point in time just to get an exemplary data set. So you see, we're getting a open, high, low, close, adjusted, close data set containing of rows indicating daily data and open, high, low, close, adjusted, close, columns. Next, we loop over this data frame to generate the Renko signals. This is what this function is doing, create Renko. So let's go over it step by step. This is taking the open, high, low, close data frame and also a brick size. Now let me lose one or two sentences on that brick size. That brick size for this video is being set randomly. I'm just picking some number. But this number is very important and that is, for instance, subject to optimization, that is subject to the volatility of the stock. This number is very important. For this video, as said, I'm just taking a random number. So this function create Renko is taking an open with a high to close data frame and a brick size and then is populating a Renko list with the up and down signals or the buying and selling signals. Initially, I'm just instantiating a previous price by just taking the very first row and take the adjusted close. So that is just to get the very first adjusted close price of the data frame. Nothing more than that. Then I'm looping over this data frame, the open higher low close data frame, and I'm storing the price on every single day, which is simply the adjusted close value in every single row. And then I'm checking, is this difference between the price and the previous price 
larger or equal to the defined brick size. I'm taking the absolute difference between those. And if that is the case, this block is being executed. Why this while loop? Now it could happen that you have a difference of this, which is higher than the brick size. But then it means you have two bricks triggered. So just to give you an example, you have 100 US dollar, then it's rising to 130 and you have a brick size of 10. If you won't have a while loop here, keeping track of that, it would just jump to 130 instead of having 100, 110 and 120, 130. So that is why I'm using a while loop here to keep track of that. Now, whenever this is being triggered, I'm checking is the price larger than the previous price? And if that's the case, I have an upbreak. All right, so in our previous example, take a price of 110 and a previous price of 100 and the bridge size is 10. It's going to be triggered. The price is larger than the previous price, which would be 100. And this one would be 110. This one would be triggered because of that. So the while loop would still run. Then I'm storing the previous price and add the brick size to it. So in our case, as I explained in the beginning, 100 plus 10, 110 would be my previous price. And that is my brick level. This I'm going to store th to that Renko list. So I have an up break now and I'm just appending a dictionary here. So I'm taking a date column, store the index and the index is simply the index of that data frame in that iteration. So that would be the first iteration, second, third and so on. So this is simply storing the date. And then this is a bit misleading naming, but I kept it uh, like this. So I'm just calling that close, but this is just storing the brick level here, right? So you define previous price plus the brick size. So that is the brick level. You can name it different if that is not intuitive to you. I just called it close, which is, which might be misleading to you. It's just storing the level I am currently. And then you have a brick column and you store that this is an up signal. So again, with my exemplary numbers, so imagine you have 100 day before and then your price level is in at 110. Let's play this through. So the price would be 110 now, the previous price would be 100. So the absolute difference would be 10. That is large or equal to the brick size, which is in our case 10. At least we're assuming that. So that is going to trigger this. So we have price is larger than the previous price is, is the case because we have 110 larger than 100. Then we store previous price plus brick size. So we have 100 plus 10, 110. And then we store that in the data frame as a brick signal, an up signal here. Now, if that is not the case, so the price is not larger than the previous price, then the opposite is true. And this, this will trigger the else condition. So in that case, we have a down signal. So the previous price, and then you take the brick size and subtract it. In our case, 100 minus 10 is 90 US dollar. So in that case, you would get a selling signal or a down brick signal. And you do the same story here, you append it as a down brick to that Renko list. And finally, you just generate a data frame out of this Renko list, which is being populated by this loop. And then you turn the Renko data frame. So let's execute that and let me show you how this is looking like. So I'm calling that here and store that as Renko data frame. Call this function create Renko on our open high low close data frame on Apple. And then I just randomly define the brick size. And with that, I'm getting 
a data frame like this. So we have the date when this is occurring, then what level we have and if it's an up or down signal. This data frame you can take and calculate the PNL for yourself. So it's straightforward. In this case, that would be your first buying signal. There is no signal before that. You're getting an up signal. So you would buy the stock on that day. And then this wouldn't be triggered because you're in a position, wouldn't be triggered because you're in a position. Same story, same story. And then this is going to be trigger your selling condition. All right, and then you have an up signal again and so on. So what I'm going to do is simply loop over this data frame and calculate the PNL. That's quite straightforward. Normally, if you've followed my previous videos, I'm doing it with relative performance. So I'm calculating returns. Let's do it a bit different today. Doesn't make a difference, but let's do it with a balance. So we have an initial balance, which we are investing and then we calculate the profit of the trade and then we're keeping track of the balance. So I think that's an interesting way to also do that. So let's actually do this approach now. So we have an initial balance, 10 grand here, and then you keep track of the balance with the balance variable. Initially, I'm just setting it to 10 grand. So to the initial balance, but this is going to change, right? So with that, you buy the stock and then dependent on if you are making a loss or win, you have more capital to invest. And this is going to be changed whenever you are buying or selling a stock based on the Renko signals. This position flag is just storing the position that is simply your current balance divided by for what you bought the price. And then whenever you are selling, it's simply being set to zero again. Next, you just loop over the Renko data frame and then first check for a buying signal. I commented here, so the buy signal is either an upward reversal or the first upward break. And that is exactly what this condition is checking. So if you have a up signal or an up value in the brick column and you are in the very first iteration or the previous row is containing a down signal, then you check is your position value zero, which is the case whenever you're not in a position. So commented it here and show we are not already holding a position. Then you store the buy price, which is simply the close value. So the value in the Renko data frame. Side note again, as said in the beginning, that is quite unrealistic because you cannot buy on the close, you buy on the next days open here. Then you store the position by taking the balance and divide it by the buy price. So you're getting the number of stocks you're buying. Side note again, as said in the beginning, using frictional shares here. So you can also buy 2.5, 2.6 shares. It's unrealistic in the stock market, no worries for cryptos, but you can also, or you need to take care of that if you check that for stocks that you only buy uh, full numbers of stocks here. As said, this is just a simple amendment you have to do here. I can do that dependent on if I'm doing a follow-up video on that. Then you set your balance to zero and you said you bought at the buy price and you bought on that date. So I'm just printing it out so that we can see for what and when we bought. So I will show you the output of that print in some seconds. Okay, so we have a sell signal now, just indicating here downward reversal to make it clear. So if that is not triggered, then this is going to be checked. So you check if you have a down signal and your previous row is an up signal and you are actually in a position. So your position value is larger than zero, which is the case if you bought because your position value will be 
your balance value divided by buy price. Then you store a sell price similar as you store the buy price. And then your balance is simply your position, which is the number of stocks you have times the sell price. That is just the notional value of your position. And finally, as I wrote here, you reset the position to zero as you sold and you're not in a position anymore. And then you can print out you sold for the sell price on this and that date. Okay, so you have all your up and down brick signals. Now, finally, this is important for the case if you bought and you are not getting a down signal. So you want to mark to market your position. So if you're in a position after this loop, so if your position value is larger than zero, you just calculate your balance by taking the what in whatever position you are and multiply that with the last available value in the Renko data frame. So you mark your position to market to current market value and you have your final balance then. And here I'm just printing out your initial balance, which is 10 grand and your final balance, which is the balance value getting updated throughout the loop. So let's run this. And you see bought at 92, just to give you the data frame. So as I said, first buying signal, this one here, then you sell on the first down signal and so on, right? You see it here printed out. So this is just your trades, your initial balance and your final balance of 15 grand. So out of 10K, you made 15 grand as it's an uh, exemplary video. I'm not doing an analysis whether the strategy is good or bad. Therefore, you have to do some more uh, deep dive on how the brick size is being estimated. There are several approaches which are being used, as I said, volatility optimization. So I think a very hot and interesting topic. So if you're interested in that, doing a more thorough backtest, a more realistic backtest and some parameter optimization, let me know. Thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to seeing the upcoming videos. Cheers. Bye bye.